The Best Picture Oscar contenders this year include Netflix's German war epic, Steven Spielberg's movie memoir, and the triumphant returns of Avatar and Top Gun. But are they any good? Well, here's a roundup of the movies as covered by our critics here at the Wall Street Journal. Here are the 10 nominees for Best Motion Picture of the Year. All Quiet on the Western Front, Marta Grunert, producer. Based on Erich Maria Remarque's traumatizing experiences as a young German soldier in the trenches of France, the novel All Quiet on the Western Front gets its first German language adaptation, directed by Edward Berger. Fully understanding the war may not be necessary in appreciating the disturbing, moving, and sometimes too beautiful production, writes John Anderson. A production that certainly puts a Teutonic tweak on history, sometimes to outrageous effect. Avatar, The Way of Water. James Cameron and John Landau producers. So what does her heartbeat sound like? Mighty. With the sequel to 2009's Avatar, James Cameron reaffirms himself as the blockbuster director of his generation, still king of the world. I'm the king of the world! <laughs> Avatar The Way of Water, writes Kyle Smith, is a deeply immersive, utterly enchanting three-hour escape that can't be compared with anything except its predecessor. To distinguish it from the first film, some might call the second entry in the proposed five movie series W.O.W. And WOW is as handy a one-word review as any. And I need you to be strong. The Banshees of Inisherin, Graham Broadbent, Pete Chernin, and Martin McDonough, producers. Now, if I've done something to you, just tell me what I've done to you. Well, you didn't do anything to me. I just don't like you no more. You didn't like me yesterday. Wounded but funny, quiet but resonant, and resistant to anything like a Hollywood formula, The Banshees of Inisherin, writes Kyle, is a strangely profound little comedy. Are you rowing? I didn't think we were rowing. Well, you are rowing. Well, you are rowing. He's sitting outside and he's on like a watch and call. It does look like we're Rowan. It's one of the few true originals among movies this year. I suppose I'd best go talk to him so. See what all this is fecking about. Elvis, Baz Luhrmann, Catherine Martin, Gail Berman, Patrick McCormick and Skylar Weiss, producers. Get a haircut, buttercup! In that moment, I watched that skinny boy transform into a superhero. Well, you may on the cusp of age 60, the hyperkinetic Australian director Baz Luhrmann could earn our forgiveness and even our gratitude if he calmed down a bit, but instead Mr Luhrmann remains the same over-caffeinated film student he's always been, writes Kyle. His speciality, of course, is updating classics for the young and impatient. And with Elvis, that means firing a confetti cannon laced with cubic zirconia and tinsel at the target. Now, I don't know nothing about music, but I could see in that girl's eyes, he was a taste of forbidden fruit. She could have eaten him alive. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Daniel Kwan, Daniel Scheinert, and Jonathan Wong, producers. Everything, Everywhere, All at Once may be the most literal film title since Georges Méliès A Trip to the Moon. This ingenious dazzler, writes Amy Nicholson, is half poignant epic, half prank by filmmaking duo Daniel Kwan and Daniel Shiner. Evelyn Wang and her multitudes, the infinite Evelyns, are scattered across the multiverse. Their decisions, both big and small, peel their life trajectories apart from the Alpha Evelyn, a brilliant scientist who invented a technique to leap between her counterparts. The Fablemans, Christy McCosco-Krieger, Steven Spielberg and Tony Kushner, 
produces. Movies are dreams. As recalled in the deeply felt and finely etched memoir movie The Fablemans, that you never forget. Steven Spielberg grew up in a family where one parent was an artist, Sammy, and the other an engineer. His parents even provided young Stephen with narrative sustenance, an appropriately cinematic family mystery that took him many years to understand. In this family, it's the scientists versus the artists. And that has given much texture to his work. What kind of movie are we gonna make? Like the best memoirs, writes Kyle Smith, The Fablemans drills down into experience with admirable specificity and frankness. You dismiss what he does. It's playful or imaginative. You could afford to be a little encouraging. Tar, Todd Field, Alexandra Milshon, and Scott Lambert, producers. Do you ever find yourself overwhelmed by emotion? Yes. Yes, it does happen. Kate Blanchett is a force of nature, but then again, so is a blizzard or a cyclone, writes Kyle. Going on to say, my respect for all of the above is considerable, but my love for them is limited. In Ms. Blanchett's latest movie, she plays an imperious and exacting conductor. Tar is meant to be a deep dive in conducting classical music, but unfortunately, at its end, I understood conducting as little as I did at the beginning, which is to say, not at all. The reality is that right from the very beginning, I know precisely what time really? it is and the exact moment that you and I will arrive at our destination together. Top Gun Maverick, Tom Cruise, Christopher McQuarrie, David Ellison, and Jerry Bruckheimer producers. The short review of Top Gun Maverick is that it's half video game, half car commercial, writes John Anderson, which may be exactly what audiences want from their big screen experience now. Frictionless storytelling with special effects. What the hell? Good morning, aviators. They may also want Tom Cruise. It's your captain speaking. Who, as most people are likely aware, returns as Pete Maverick Mitchell chronically insubordinate Navy captain and the best pilot anyone's ever seen. The end is inevitable, Maverick. You're kind of set it for extinction. Maybe so, sir. But not today. Triangle of Sadness. Eric Hemmendorf and Philippe Gobert, producers. I command you, enjoy the moment. No. No? No. <laughs> what? You say no to me? No, no. Oh, so it's yes. Uh, yeah, no. Yes. Go oh, yeah. in. Yes! Should a woman who makes three times as much as her boyfriend pay for dinner? Can Marxists and capitalists learn anything from each other? More importantly, what would Gilligan's Island have looked like if it had been directed by Luis Bunuel? Ship is going under. Such are the questions raised by writer-director Ruben Ostlund in his savagely entertaining social satire, Triangle of Sadness, that Kyle considers one of the liveliest and most provocative films of last year. A Russian capitalist. And an American <laughs> communist. On oh. a $250 million luxury yacht. Women talking. <laughs> Didi Gardner, Jeremy Kleiner, and Francis McDormand, producers. Please come out and be counted now. Please come out of your homes to be counted for the 2010 census. Women Talking begins in the gruesome aftermath of a hideous mass rape and a question being urgently discussed among a group of women victims. What to do about it. Do nothing. Stay and fight. Leave. Leave. Written for the screen and directed by Sarah Polly from Miriam Taves' novel, the film nearly boils over with righteous fury at the treatment of its characters, writes Kyle, who were meant to stand for women in general. Have we made a decision? Our choice will be your future. There you go, all 10 Best Picture Oscar nominees in less than 10 minutes. And if you'd like a deeper dive into any of them, links to the full reviews can be found in the body text to this video.